very familiar with, as some of you are. Um, I can't continue the MOD process with you because I don't know what kind of department we will have in the city of Los Angeles. In fact, I don't know what kind of city we're going to have after this current process is going through. And the process, I mean, is the Early Retirement Center Program, EREP, which you may have heard about. Um, the city has chosen to eliminate 2,400 positions um, from the city immediately um, within the next few months. That process has already begun, and people, Carolyn, is a part of that process. And these will be the most senior staff of the city of Los Angeles, uh, people that could retire, and maybe people that were close to retirement are now being bought out to retire. The program was oversubscribed uh, by at least 500 people, so we probably have about 2,900 or maybe even 3,000 people that have signed up. Um, and of those, 2,400 will be allowed to go under the incentives of the EGRA program. Now, people that are allowed to leave anyway could leave, they'll retire but anyway. We have, I don't know the number, I was trying to figure this out last night. I'm not sure how many are eligible to retire regardless of ERA. The city is very weighted with regard to older workers and younger workers. Um, many of the people that came into the city the same year as I did in the set early 70s and mid 70s are now, make up the majority of people in the city. So we're weighted in that way anyway. So many of us could be, regardless of ERIP, um, within the city ranks. It really, I really, really worked with myself regarding this um, because I know the importance of working with the community and I've had more experience now in working with all of you in this process than I would have normally had on an actual case basis for myself. And it hurts me because I know that in good faith we all wanted to make this work and even my own staff that I had to work with to get them to even come to a, uh, come to a place where they could deal with this was, was a lot of effort on their part as well. So both sides have worked hard to try to make this work. But I always tried to warn you from the very beginning of this is that I could see this train coming. It's just like it was just a blink down the road. But I always was honest with you that I could not deliver what I can't really, I can't, I won't make promises that I can't deliver. And at this point, the city is an implosion. It is, it is imploding from inside itself. And it is an opportunity, as Mr. Everhart just mentioned to me, for smart people to look at it and say, this is an opportunity for us to rebuild ourselves. Now generally, just as I remodeled my house and I decided that de basically I wanted to demolish it and rebuild it, but I wanted to leave up two walls so I could protect my, pro my property tax issue. Um, you usually go in, and those of you that are engineers and architects know that you put together the plan on the vision of what you want to rebuild in that space before you demolish what you currently have. What we've done as a city is decided to demolish and then we're standing on the sidewalk with our suitcases saying where are we going to sleep tonight because we really don't know what we're going to rebuild. So it's a little bit of an opposite reaction. But it's not a hopeless situation. What I do see is that we have an opportunity now to say what kind of city do we want to be? And I think that more importantly than ever, if there is any glimmer of hope of advice I could give you from the neighborhood council and constituency level, it would be to make your voices heard on what do you want to see maintained that the city continues to do. Now, the city has already made a choice that police and fire, public safety, will be the protected bubble. That, you know, police has given up things and fire have given up some things, but basically they're not suffering furloughs or layoffs or um, E-RIP only of civilians, but not sworn. So their world is changing too because the positions that they normally had that supported the police force, those people aren't there either. The people that fix their cars, the people that wash their cars, the people that do the administrative work, they're being eaten away as well. So even in that protective bubble, there's not some vision of the fact that will change their world too. So we have yet a lot of work to do in the city and it will be different i mean i've been there 33 years and it will be extremely different we've been through rough times before we've been through rough times with extremely strong back leadership though at this 
level, I don't know, I brought the motion that was, um, that went out yesterday that really bothered me. There was a motion made by, um, it was it was signed by Zine, Rosendahl, and Peretz. And they, you know, it was more like, okay, we know that Europe is gonna take away all these people from the city, what do we do now? And it's like, well, okay, this motion is, now that we're in the process of Europe, and if any of you watched yesterday's council meeting, it was, it was very sad to me because it was more like our leadership was reactionary and yet they voted for something that would have an impact on them that you know started at least two years ago. Carolyn listened to it, several of our staff watched it yesterday. I just couldn't bear to because I realized that this is really what eats away at me is the fact that we have we don't, when we, even when we tell them that these things are going to happen, that somehow there's a denial factor that goes in. And then we become reactionary, but it's too late. You know, and that's what bothered me a little bit about it. But it, and they've received a file, of which they should have done, because there were all these instructions to tell the CAO to do this, to tell the CAO. Well, the CAO's been doing all of these things, and the personnel department has been doing these things, and yet they're losing people too. So it's not an excuse. I, I don't really want any of you to walk away from this room today thinking that I'm trying to make excuses on behalf of the department, myself, the staff, the city. All I'm trying to do is to put you in the reality band of what's going on. Um, the department stands to lose 160 people, plus the vacancies that we currently already have, and more if, in fact, EREP encourages more people to leave because people won't want to stay and deal with what's left behind. That was one of the fears I had. The biggest thing that's going to happen is that this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning, folks. There will be additional departures from the city through layoffs because they just don't have the money to support it. We have a house that we can't sustain. The city has a house it can't sustain. And that's where it's got to come to terms with itself and say, okay, what can we afford? And that is absolutely, I've testified at the council table a number of times, it's no different than each one of us in our own wallet saying, how much can we afford? I would love to go in Neiman Marcus and buy a nice dress, but I realize that I'm going to go to Target and buy one and I'll be fine. I will be fine. I will be okay. Because the day will come again when I may be able to go in Neiman Marcus, but it's not a necessity because there are people in reality trying to keep a roof over their head, trying to keep food in their kids' stomachs, trying to keep the piece of job that they have so that they can at least pay rent. Um, I mean, these are realities that I don't think that we've really faced as city employees to that level. And even with furloughs and days that we've missed and hours we can't work, we still are not at that level. So I always remind the staff that we are in better shape than the majority of people out there. So there's no need for you to whine. Just shut up, suck it up, and we'll move on and do the best job we can. And we will continue to do that on your behalf and on the citizens' behalf because in the end of the day, the thing that I know is important is that we do the best job for all of you because that's the reason why we're there. And even if we make mistakes in that process, we still owe it to you to do the best we can. We just don't know at this point what we're going to be allowed to continue to do and how much of it we can continue to do. I'm trying to get the city to realize that those funds that we get in order to build projects and do things, we need to make sure staff are assigned to those or otherwise we'll lose all of that too. All of that funding comes with a price. And if we don't do things with that funding, then we lose the funding. So I've been focusing the, the, the city on that level. Miguel Santana, the new CAO, has been working diligently to try to bring them to reality. Um, the other, I love pundit political shows, CNN, MSNBC, all of them. And one woman mentioned in an interview, she said, well, I think that the entire Congress is dealing with, has, has a case of RDD. And the commentator said, what is RDD? And she says, reality deficit disorder. And that's exactly what I feel that we're dealing with, the reality deficit disorder. The reality is we have a house we can't sustain. How do we shave off enough people to make it work? And that's not only the revenue and payroll, but that's also with regarding the, pay, the pension system. The pension system is in bad, bad shape. And if any of you listen to Bernard Parks, 
talk about this. He's the lone wolf, along sometimes with Greg Smith. I would say they do a, 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 a sideshow.